invited them to sign up. There were two candidates who could not make it. Ricky Byram is on family vacation, and Derek Robson is also on family vacation. Um, Derek asked if I read this, and I told him that I would. Citizens and fellow candidates, I want to apologize for my absence tonight. I am currently out of the state on a vacation with my family. We had this vacation planned for the last 10 months, so I don't want anyone to think I just wasn't there to show up for this forum. I think that it is important for the citizens to try to get as much information as possible on each candidate before they cast their vote at the polls. I want to thank all my supporters and my family, and I appreciate your understanding. Um, we will start the forum tonight with our mayor candidates. So, Roger, Nick, if you guys want to come forward. I'm going to ask a question. Both candidates will have a chance to answer that question. They will have two minutes to answer the question. Um, Heather Buckner and Bradley Roberts will be timing the question. So if you get to two minutes, Heather will ring her little bell and you just finish it up and let the next person go. Uh, and I will rotate back and forth with the questions. First, I want to say that this will be re-aired on Farmers and WLW. And I want to say a special thanks to Vicky's for the flowers that they provided for tonight. Okay, I would like to introduce your 2016 mayoral candidates. I've got incumbent Nick Jones and challenger Roger Hinderfeld. Let's give these guys a hand. First question, I'll let Nick go first. What is your plan to grow large and small industry? Thank you, Tricia, for the question, and thank you, Times Journal, for putting on this forum uh, for Rainbow because getting to know the candidates is, 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 uh, is important. And uh, every time, every four years, an election year rolls around, it's an important time for every city. Uh, and Rainbow is no different. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, plans as far as expanding business, you know, I uh, may have a different opinion than, than some politicians on. Uh, expansion of business. I think government has a role in it. Um, I think the primary role, especially here at the local level, is making sure that we've got the infrastructure in place uh, that those businesses can leverage off of. And that infrastructure is, is the sewer, uh, which we've focused on in this term, expanding, preparing for growth and development in our industrial park, uh, a good road system. We've got an active industrial development board. Some of those members are here tonight. They do a great job. Uh, Rainbow has a great working relationship with the Economic Development Authority, Jimmy Durham and Fort Payne. Uh, it's a group effort, it's a collective effort, and, uh, and I, I, think, I think we've done a fairly decent job. Uh, I don't have a statistic on the net job Rainbow added, I know it is over 100 in this four year term. Uh, small, small businesses uh, in Rainbow, we've had quite a bit of growth, uh, especially on the retail front. Um, I know downtown, uh, some of the concerns with retail growth. Uh, is, is a lack of parking, and we're actively working on that. Um, we want to provide, and it goes back to government's role, to provide the infrastructure and making sure uh, we're providing an environment that's conducive to growth. Thank you. Roger. I'd, I'd like to thank you for uh, putting on this forum, and, and thank everyone that came, that came, that came out tonight to this, and. Uh, uh, it is it is important to get out and see the people that, that you're going to be voting for, and 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 kind of get a, get to know them a little bit better. And something like this is real important. Uh, Nick covered a lot of good points. Uh, some of the things that, that he he talked about was infrastructure, and uh, I I've been from the background of uh, the utility companies. Infrastructure is really important, whether it's uh, whether it's the uh, farmers and their and their fiber optics that is really, really important for the growth of, uh, of, of the business. The business customers, have, have they have to have a lot of, of bandwidth, and, and the growth of that is uh, farmers can provide that real well. Uh, another thing is Sam Electric is a great, a great company, and uh, just recently for us, they have uh, placed a uh, new substation in our industrial park, which is uh, very positive. We have, we're one of the only uh, cities in probably Northeast Alabama, that has a, uh, a substation inside their industrial park, which is a, a great asset for that. And, and so 
that's the stuff that, that you have to have in the infrastructure. Now, uh, the parking, I, I really don't know how we're going to correct that parking in, in downtown, but it's, it's something that has been worked on. The, uh, the community of excellence uh, group has worked real hard on that, and uh, they're, they're, they're doing some planning on that to try to fix that. Uh, it, Rainsville is, is picked up, and I, I don't have the numbers right in front of me, but, but uh, a tremendous amount of small business. You know, just like tomorrow, we've got uh, a ribbon cutting at the uh, roadside key at 11 o'clock. So, you know, the Chamber of Commerce worked real hard to keep us informed of everything that goes on. So, thank you. Second question, and by the way, every one of these questions were submitted. I had over 50 questions submitted, and I kind of had to just compile them all down to just feed for time restraints. Um, what would you like to see done with the Agribusiness Center to help it continue to generate more revenue? The Agribusiness Agri Center is uh, is a great tool for the city, and uh, it it is. Uh, booked about 42 out of 50 weeks. And, and that may be a little bit off because it could be that, that it's booked uh, five days one week and they kind of keep that in the, in, in the depth, you know, like 42 weeks. So uh, the thing that I would like to see with Ag Center is, of course, more bookings, you know, to get more weeks out of that and uh, uh, bring in, you know, different, Different things to it instead of just uh, equine and and, uh, and cattle and that you know rodeos. Bring other things out to the to the agri center. A uh, little bit of little bit of uh, money part on the agri center. Uh, you know it's been in it's been in about uh, it's been in close to ten years. And uh, over that ten years, we've had about uh, somewhere around 30, 32 to thirty four percent growth, which accumulates to a lot of growth in the city of Lyons. And so. You know, with that, you know, you're looking at somewhere around that would be a, a probably close to six hundred thousand dollars a year added to our budget on gross receipts in the in the in the city of Huntsville, which over that period of time would be close to uh, you know three million dollars, four million dollars, something like that. So I think the Agri Center has produced some income to the city, which helps pay for itself. Thank you. Uh, there's no doubt that Action Center is a big part of the uh, big part of the budget, uh, big uh, big impact economically. Uh, the you know the cost of the Action Center on the city is around thirty thousand a month. Uh, tax receipts have grown over the time period that the Action Center is open. Uh, so has inflation. So has cost of goods. Um, I think it does add to the, the tax base. I think it does put the uh, tax dollars in the city coffers. I am unsure about the real impact, to be honest with you. Uh, I've talked with the Agri Center board. Uh, I think I think we've got a prime example here in Rainville to have a, a graduate student come in from the University of Alabama, Auburn University, and do a thesis and do a study on the true economic impact of, of the Agri Center. Uh, Agri Center, like I said, is a big part of Rainville. Um, it's, it's pretty expensive. And uh, there's no doubt that there's decisions to be made uh, in the future um, how we're going to continue to uh, to fund that. Okay. Third question, Nick, I'll let you go first. Okay. In the last four years, there's been a lot of controversy within the local government of Rainsville. How will you work to eliminate that and focus on the issues at hand? Sure. Uh, good question. Real good question. There has been a lot of controversy. Uh, and, I, and I hate that. I, I regret that. I really do. Um, I think a lot of the controversy has been driven, you know, by personal agendas and uh, and uh, misguided uh, misguided intentions. In another term, uh, you know, I, I don't want to beat a, a dead horse, but in another term, I would do a lot of things the same way. Uh, my door would be open uh, to any and all citizens, any and all elected officials. Um, I am always open to extend an olive branch uh, and compromises and meet folks in the middle. Um, I have tried to do that in this term, and, uh, and, for, and sometimes it has worked. As you can see, as you will hear tonight, we've got a lot of work done in this term. Uh, some of the battles that we were not able to compromise played out in the public square, in 
and you all are probably pretty aware of this. Um, but in another term, uh, I would seek uh, to uh, build a better relationship with the council and, and ask them to at least meet me halfway uh, on the issues. And if there's not issues that we can work through and, and, uh, and compromise on, that at least we do it in a, in a gentleman fashion and that we agree to disagree. Thank you. Roger. Probably going forward, uh, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about myself right here on this. Uh, I have had a lot of experience working with the citizens of DeKalb, Jackson County, and some of the surrounding counties when I worked at Farmers. I don't work at Farmers anymore. I retired back in April, but I worked hand in hand with thousands of customers, business customers, uh, residents, of, of, of those two counties, and uh, I think I have a, a good a good feel for working with people, uh, getting uh, my work done, you know, through those people, working with them, and I'm a hands-on type of person. I'm going to go out there and work as hard as I can, and I'm going to I'm going to get down there and get dirty with you. I'm going to work, and I. But this is one thing I don't do. I do not. micromanage anybody when I work with them. All the people that I've worked with down through the years will tell you that, that I do not micromanage. I let them do their job. I expect them to do their job and, and I'm, I'm going to get that, that job done by doing that. So, uh, being, a, being a firm leader, uh, getting, getting to uh, know the council, working with the council hand in hand, uh, my goal for this council for the next four years, if I'm elected, you know, uh, will be Harmony, and with harmony, creates strength and growth in the community. Nobody's going to come to town if we've got bickering and fighting amongst the city council and the mayor. So my my number one goal is that is harmony. And thank you. All right. Question number four, Roger. I'll let you go first. It is illegal for a city employee to work on private property. What would you do if you found out this were happening? Or would you ever ask a city employee to work in private property? That's a very good question. And uh, I have had that question asked to me multiple times during this term. Will you come and fix the problem I have on my road or in my, in my drainage or whatever? As long as it's inside the, the ditches to the road, then it's part of the city because there's a right of way there. But once we get out on private drives or different areas like that, no, we're not to do that. And uh, if uh, if we had uh, employees that worked on private property, then they would be brought in and, and uh, recommended and done something with it. So anyway, uh, do not, we cannot work on private, and I am not going to be uh, a part of anything done like that. So going forward, that, it's the same thing. I'm not going to do it. Thank you. Nick? Uh, I, you know, I, I agree with Roger. I mean, if there's anything unethical going on with uh, city employees or, you know, elected officials, I think there's two ways to look at it, uh, and that is if there's uh, intent. If it's not intent to uh, do wrong, do some unethical things, I think the appropriate thing is is uh, treat them like a brother or sister and go to them, sit down, talk to them, uh, explain to them where, where you believe that they're in error. Um, ask them to correct the ways. If they won't do that, then I think obviously discipline is, is needed. Um, if there's unethical behavior that's discovered and it's clear that there's intent to, to uh, commit that unethical behavior, uh, you know, I think that um, there's a few ways you could handle that. You could go to them and talk to them, explain why they're wrong, uh, but it might be possible that, uh, you know, a higher authority uh, with the state might need be needed in this situation. Okay. Fifth question. Nick, I'll let you go first. The previous council passed a tax increase known as the D.C. gas tax. In the last campaign cycle, many candidates vowed if elected they would repeal the tax. During the last four years, no action has been made to repeal the tax. If elected, will you work to repeal the D.C. gas tax? 
Church. Uh, this was an issue four years ago. And, uh, you know, D.C. gas is a complicated issue. It is a tax uh, passed, you know, a little over four years ago. And, uh, you know, it was a pretty heated topic in the last, uh, the last election. And, uh, you know, my stance on it is I, I, I see the fairness argument with, with businesses. Uh, of course, D.C. Gas is not a private company. Uh, it's a utility company. Uh, but my problem with D.C. Gas tax is, uh, first of all, it, it really doesn't make sense that it's that heated of an issue because it only brings about $30,000 to the city on an annual basis. Uh, it's really, uh, you know, I think it's more of the, the, the sticking point more in the detail. Uh, but really my main issue with it is that uh, Rangeville's ordinance that allows us to, to have that tax is, is uh, dated from 1964. The 1965 Alabama law uh, that prohibits towns and cities in Alabama from levying that tax uh, is after Rangeville ordinance. And so our ordinance is grandfathered in. Uh, Rangeville, I don't know, another town or city in the state of Alabama uh, that can levy that tax. And so my issue with DC gas tax is that it's a tax that our neighbors uh, in, other, in other cities and towns can't levy. Uh, so, in essence, it's a tax that no other town has on their books that might affect a potential uh, company that's looking for a place to locate. That's my issue with it. Uh, in real dollars, it's not a whole lot of money. Uh, but my stance would be, uh, let's repeal D.C. gas and uh, let's let Montgomery decide whether they want to allow towns and cities to levy that tax. If they want, if they want that to be the case, they need to do something with the 1965 law. I have to agree with Nick on this. Uh, there, the laws were put out there, uh, 1964, the, the ordinance in 1965, they contradicted with each other. One fell right in front of the other, and it, it created that tax issue. And so uh, it, it was where that, that tax could be put on. I, I have to agree uh, that uh, with us being able to charge that tax, versus somebody else. It could be an issue for us to land a larger industry. And and so and, and like Nick said, it, it's only it's thirty to it's thirty five to forty five thousand dollars is how much it is here, somewhere along in there. And uh, it's not a, a major deal. But I have talked to business customers that say that it's not a big deal. You know, don't worry about it. Just leave it on there. But um, my feelings on it all along has been that I thought we should go do away with it. But it's real complicated in doing away with it because of some of the other um, water companies and, and electric companies that we deal with that it could cause some kind of fallout with them. So it is a, it is a really hot issue to, to talk about sometimes. So, thank you. I have a sixth question. Roger, I'll let you take this one. Um, both mayor candidates are currently elected officials. Explain some of the issues or projects that you have supported in the last four years and some that you did not support. Uh, some of the things that... Some of the things that I have uh, uh, supported is, uh, of course, I've, I've kind of headed up some projects and, and so I would say that I probably supported those projects if I headed them up. Um, a couple of those are like uh, we installed a new playground at the sports complex, which has got uh, a zip line in it, which kids love, and uh, it has absolutely been a great thing for the kids. And it was the first zip line that was installed uh, with, by game time in the United States at a, at a location like that. So it's been a, it's been a great asset to our city. Uh, two ball fields. I was over the sports complex when most of this month. Uh, we added a new uh, softball field up there for the for the high school, uh, which we turned the soccer field into a, a, you know, this was a project that had some vision in it, and, and I kind of kind of headed it up, but the council and mayor went along with all this, and it was a great project, I thought, to uh, to get the high school softball a, a field of their own. Now, the sports complex still uses the field, but it's it's mostly dedicated to playing softball. Uh, then another thing is uh, they got a new 
pitch facility up there. And all this was tied back to the school, and the school wanted to contract with us to uh, lease this. So they're actually paying us to lease these fields in this in this hidden facility. Uh, other projects uh, over the past four years, it's been uh, uh, the new municipal building that I have worked real hard on. The, the council put me in charge of the uh, of the uh, renovations, and uh, it was it was what they wanted to do. Uh, I've I've just seen that project, and we have got a really nice building out there now. And uh, if you haven't been in to pay your tags, pay for your tags and your tax, and get your driver's license, it's it's a real nice building. So that's some of the projects that I have worked on uh, during my uh, past few years. <laughs> Nick? Uh, we've, we've got a lot of work done in the last four years. Uh, a lot of work. Uh, we've uh, had a real emphasis on public safety. Police department's in the process of, adding, of getting a three men per shift. That's a big deal for the town. Let's, let's see the size of the range. Uh, fire, fire department's added over a million dollars, uh, or received over a million dollars in grants to help update their their uh, their equipment, their trucks, uh, better training. Uh, we've had a sewer expansion going on this term. Uh, sewer expansion is uh, not something that gets a lot of people's attention, but it is a must, and we're preparing for the future uh, or for future growth. Uh, as Roger mentioned, had a field of dreams expansion, softball field. Uh, was added a, a special needs uh, part was added with the help of the the, uh, the Boy Scouts, and we've continued to work and find ways to privatize work and tasks that the city needs done. A prime example of that is we privatized the uh, the mowing. Eighty percent plus of the city's mowing now is done by a private contractor. That's something I'm very proud of. Uh, I asked the council months back if, uh, if we could explore it, and they agreed. And, and uh, it's turned out to be a really good thing. So cut that expense in half. And we'll continue to do that. We've worked on cross-training employees where our staff at the various different departments where, where, we, where we can work with less people and reduce our workforce. Um, but probably the biggest issue that I'm, that I'm proud of is the budget surpluses that we've run in this term. Uh, we're on track to run budget surpluses of cumulatively over four years of over $450,000. And that is... That is Something, as far as I know, that's never been done in Lanesville. And that's the real scorecard. Because these are your tax dollars. That's $450,000 that was budgeted to be spent. That we figured out a way to do your business for you and not need that money. Very good answer. Okay, seventh question. Nick, I'll let you go. What is the state of the city's financial status? Is it good, bad, and what do you see happening with it in the future? Uh, the state of the city, of course, that's a that's an issue that's near and dear to my heart as we've had uh, uh, four state of the city addresses. Uh, and by the way, let me address that real quick. That is an important, I know that's been a contentious issue, but that's very important to me. Uh, it's an accountability issue. Because what we're talking about here tonight is the people's business, the people's work. We're talking about spending your money, your tax money. Uh, and how the city conducts its business and how efficiently it does that, in, or inefficiently, is something that you should be concerned with and, and it should be important to you. And as your mayor, it's been important for me to tell you uh, how the scorecard reads. Not just tell you, but show you. Uh, but as far as the state of the city, the, the, as far as I'm concerned, the city is in good shape. Uh, we have plenty of tax revenue. We don't have any need for any new taxes. And I know that as a taxpayer, I know how I feel about that, and that's a, that's a good thing. Uh, but we're plus the tax dollars. We've got more debt than I, than I would prefer. Uh, Rangers got it cumulatively, uh, or act in the aggregate uh, with all our proprietary component units. We've got a little over $10 million of debt. Uh, and for a city that runs a, a $5.5 million annual budget, that's a little heavy. That's a little heavy for my style. Uh, and I think we, we need to address that. But as far as the city and the financial crunch, crunch or crisis, that's just not the case. We're doing good. We're doing good. We just need to pay our debt now. Okay. I think I think the city is doing real good. Uh, we uh, in, during this term we have uh, uh, refinanced uh, a bond. It was an older bond. It was uh, 
bond aid. And with that, it saved uh, the city $174,000 over that bond, over the time, over the term of that bond. And uh, other things that went on, uh, Nick touched on the uh, sewer expansion. The, the sewer expansion was a new leach aid that we have uh, uh, bid out and implemented, and it's almost up to, uh, well, phase one is finished, phase two is fixing to start. Uh, that right there together uh, was, was putting uh, about $60,000 a year into the, uh, into the budget, paying into the season for us treating that, that leach aid. Uh, that's going to go above $200,000. And so that's another uh, big, big thing that happened in the city with, uh, with us uh, uh, seeing how the sewer plant operates and us looking at a new revenue stream for the sewer plant to try to get it in the black. Now, when I first came on the council in 2004, the, it was nothing uncommon for the sewer plant to be losing uh, anywhere from, uh, I'm going to say, eight to $900,000 a year. Now, we're right on the brink of the sewer plant uh, being in the black. So that has turned around a bunch. With the, and, and that's a big, when you start not having to subsidize that sewer plant, uh, eight to nine hundred thousand dollars and now it's getting into black, that's a big turnaround for the city, which in turn puts uh, money back into the uh, general fund. And I think, this, I think like Nick said, uh, we've got a surplus of about $450,000, and that's came from, uh, you know, uh, different different parts of the city. The sewer plant uh, getting better, uh, the, uh, uh, just different things in the city like uh, the mowing, where we, where, like, just like the mowing, you know, that was uh, uh, two jobs, and we cut that back to, those two jobs went back to about 30, uh, I guess it's going to be close to $30,000 a year. All right, the eighth question will be <laughs> What is the status of the DeKalb County Schools Coliseum? I got this question several times to people in, in different formats. The status of the DeKalb County Coliseum is uh, that, as far as I know, they have paid their last payment, and it is paid for. Now, the city council, mayor, the mayor and the city council, needs to move forward with uh, doing something with it because we're still having to pay the insurance on that building. So um, it's, it is actually paid for. Uh, they have been some talk about buying it back. They have sent us some prices, but uh, right now it is, as far as I'm concerned, it is theirs to, uh, to have if, if we can get it turned over to them. So. I disagree. Uh, contract uh, <clears throat> between the city and the, and the county school board. Uh, dating back to, I think, 2000 or so, called for 11 payments. And City Hall records show that we received 10 payments. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not the smartest guy in the room, but I could figure out that they owe, they owe one more payment. And they've informed us they're not going to pay that. Uh, you know, also, in sidestepping that, uh, the county informed us that you know that they're not particularly interested in keeping the city and you know in, in my opinion i grew up here in rainsville it's my hometown and it's going to continue to be my hometown uh, i think the city center belongs to the city of rainsville i think it belongs to the people here uh, it's rainsville people that built the civic center it's rainsville people that come up with money some people that, that come up with money that they didn't have so that that project could get off the ground and it's rainsville businesses that endure a sales tax hike so the city could afford to operate it and pay it off. But my opinion is the civic center belongs to the city of Rainsville, and I'd like to have that back. Uh, it would require the city buy it back, I think, for, you know, less, probably less than 50 cents on the dollar of what it would take to build it, or what it would work. Um, but I think that's a worthy project, and I, and I would like to have the civic center back. That's my, that's my personal opinion. That is all the questions I have. I'm going to give each candidate two minutes to address you, the citizens, and just you know why they would appreciate your vote. Uh, Nick, we'll let you go first on that. Sure. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure uh, 
to be the mayor of my hometown for four years. Um, I have strived to work for the people. Uh, I have strived to, to conduct city business in a fashion that I would conduct my own business. And so doing that in a transparent and efficient manner has been, has been important to me. Um, the city, there's no doubt, um, I can stand up here and tell you, you can look for yourself on paper. The city is operating more efficiently than it was 40 years ago. Um, it's operating more transparently than it was 40 years ago. Um, but as we're saying, sometimes transparency um, causes some squabbles, causes some fights. Um, but it's, let me tell you, it's a fight that's worth having. But I've enjoyed serving. And, you know, I've, I've uh, at times where we could, I've reached out to the council uh, where we, we could find some common ground uh, and try to, try to lead the way uh, on a city government that, that I think should and must uh, live with its means. And uh, try to be responsive to the citizens' needs. As I mentioned before, my door is always open. I uh, pride myself on giving out my cell phone number uh, so that people can, uh, people can always reach me. Um, but it's been important to me that I be the kind of leader that I think most people want out of the mayor, whether you know me personally or not. Uh, and that is somebody that, that has strong principles, uh, is very deliberate in thought and speech, quick to listen and slow to anger, and somebody that always carries the people's business out and meets the expectations of the citizens. Because I think ultimately what we're talking about here tonight uh, what we'll talk about in the coming days as the campaign goes on is the people's business. And I think that needs to be done in the most efficient manner and definitely in a transparent manner. Uh, I've enjoyed serving you, and I hope that you would uh, consider me for another term. Thank you. I would like to say that uh, I have thoroughly enjoyed uh, serving citizens of Rangeville for the past uh, actually 12 years. And uh, I would like to continue doing that in, in, the, uh, in this aspect of uh, as being in the mayor. Uh, I would, uh, I have uh, a lot of, uh, I guess, I guess I'm kind of settled in what I do. And uh, one of those things is like, you know, I'm, I'm one of these people that, uh, I've, I've worked at the same place for 43 years. I have uh, carried out the business of, of the company that I work for to the letter and made sure that it was all done right. I have always done that for the citizens of, uh, of the, the city's business too. And uh, I'm pretty stable in what I do. Uh, I don't, uh, I go to church at Burnt Church. I, I've been here with there since 1960. And that's just the things that I, I stick with and I, I believe in that, you know, you, you need to be the, the person for your city just like you live your life and be strong for your city, and that's what I am. I, I like to get out here to work. Uh, I don't mind doing anything to help anybody in the city, and I'm gonna carry out the, the business of the city the same way that I did mine. I, I came up uh, through life, and uh, I have worked real hard to get the things that I have, and I, I'm, real, I'm real tight with my money, and I'm real, I'll be real tight with the city, and I will work real hard to make this a better place to live, because. To me, working hard for the, for the city of Rangeville and the citizens of this town and communities around, it's real important to make sure that we do that diligently to make sure that we get everything done that we're supposed to. And so uh, that's just me. I, I would uh, really, really enjoy uh, serving this city, city for another four years. So I would appreciate your vote in that. Running for public office is a thankless job. So I have very high appreciation for both these gentlemen. So let's give them a hand. Let's take about a five minute break and then we'll come back and I'll ask all the council candidates to come up to the stage and we will start with them. 